Biodiversity in Ontario's wetlands and aquatic ecosystems is being threatened by non-native species. Invaders from around the globe. We all need to understand what a major impact on the environment, on the economy and to society that these species have. Invaders that arrive without natural predators, pathogens or diseases to keep their populations in check. They come to Ontario's environment and they can reproduce very rapidly and cause all sorts of disruption in our uh, native food chains. One of the most serious invaders is the round goby, a small bottom-dwelling fish native to Eastern Europe that was accidentally drawn into the ballast tanks of transoceanic vessels and brought to North America from other continents. Originally they came from uh, overseas, the Caspian and Baltic Seas, and they were dumped through the ballast water of ships. Uh, the first sighting was in 1990 in the St. Clair River. Since then, the round goby has quickly established populations in all Ontario's Great Lakes and is spreading throughout Ontario's inland lakes. Several factors have contributed to this rapid spread and establishment. One of the preferred foods of round gobies is zebra mussels. So once the zebra mussels became firmly established in the Great Lakes, uh, not only did they alter the habitat and have their own uh, detrimental consequences, but suddenly there was a very abundant food source for gobies. And once gobies arrived, voila, lots to eat. They basically got an untapped resource and they became very abundant very quickly. They have huge reproductive rates. Gobies can spawn several times within a season and their populations can build very, very quickly within a water body. The round goby is small, only three to five inches long, but we can recognize it by its large frog-like eyes and by the black spot on its dorsal fin. Its most distinguishing feature, however, are the fused pelvic fins. Turn the fish over on its belly, you look at its pelvic fin, and the pelvic fin is fused together like a suction cup. Round gobies can be found in almost any aquatic habitat, near shore in rock gravel and weedy habitats, along sandy beaches, and in deep offshore habitats. They've been found down to 200 feet water, 60 meters, as well as right up into the surf zone. Once round gobies enter a lake or river, they can seriously affect aquatic biodiversity. Round goby's impacts can be both ecological and economic. Round gobies have a huge impact on fish populations. Um, they outcompete native fish species. They feed on the eggs and fry of many of our very important sport fish like bass and walleye. Um, so gobies will have a huge impact on these fish populations. And in turn, because they have such a, a negative impact on these fish species, um, that will affect economically as well. The sport fishery in Ontario is worth hundreds of millions of dollars each year and if round goby affect um, that fishery then they also affect tourism and angling opportunities. They eat just about anything in addition to zebra mussels so they'll eat fish eggs and the fry of fish and there's been reported consequences on things like smallmouth bass, lake trout and lake sturgeon. Gobies can move in and literally vacuum up all of the eggs in a nest in, the, in less than a minute Canada's Shipping Act now requires that all transoceanic vessels exchange their ballast with seawater before entering the Great Lakes. This should greatly reduce the likelihood of more invaders entering Ontario waters by hitching rides. We're also addressing the pathways by which gobies are spread inland. We're, we're concerned that people, because they're such a small fish, um, people may use them as a bait fish. In uh, 2005, the Ministry of Natural Resources passed regulations to make it illegal to possess live round goby and tube nose goby, as well as a few other invasive fish. We want them out of this river because they don't belong in this river. And we're, hoping... well, we're working with the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters to raise anglers' awareness that gobies uh, are illegal to use as bait. Anglers, be aware. Help stop the spread of round gobies to inland lakes and rivers. In Ontario, it is illegal to dump any live bait or bait water within 30 metres of any water body. Ontario Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point, or HACCP training, provided by MNR, OFAH's Invading Species Awareness Program, and the Bait Association of Ontario educates commercial bait harvesters and dealers to avoid the spread of aquatic invasive species like the round goby. Harvesters and dealers must complete a HACCP plan 
that is approved by MNR in order to receive their commercial bait license. The impact is uh, it's huge. The harvesters don't want to uh, pick them up. We do not want to uh, spread them out into the lakes up in the north, especially landlocked lakes. We've taken HACCP programs, which is uh, probably the biggest step uh, um, our industry has done. It's one proactive way that we're uh, slowing the spread of gobies through that particular pathway. In 2004, round gobies were discovered in a tributary of Lake Simcoe. Lake Simcoe supports a year-round, multi-million dollar fishery that is the backbone of the local economy. MNR and OFAH worked with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, conservation authorities and local partners to eradicate the gobies, but their numbers were only knocked back temporarily. But the effort increased public awareness. It engaged the community in prevention efforts and it brought numerous government agencies and non-government groups together to respond. A framework for responding to the detection of invasive fish was developed. Well, we wish the government could do it all, but certainly uh, uh, local citizens and volunteers and non-government groups are going to play a very important part. Agencies such as OMNR, OFAH, federal government, universities and colleges, the bait industry, cottage associations and local volunteers are working together to help fight the attack of invading species like round goby. Researchers are searching for methods for controlling round goby. A research group that I'm part of, uh, based out of the University of Windsor, is working to identify the chemicals that make up the odor of the male pheromone and then use synthetics to basically take that odor source and attract females. We're actually using um, pheromones or scents that the fish produce when they're reproducing to draw them into traps to see if we can use that as a way to control and get all the large females out of the population so that we keep their populations at a lower level. Invasive species cost taxpayers millions. You can help. It is really important that anglers know how to identify a round goby. Anglers are often the first people to encounter round goby in a water body because they're out fishing. Um, gobies are very likely to be caught, they're very aggressive, they go after a hook and a worm, so the anglers will be the first to catch them. So it's important that they report those sightings to the invading species hotline. Learn to identify round gobies and if caught, kill them. It is illegal to possess round gobies alive and don't use round gobies as bait. Don't dump your bait buckets. Make sure that you're not transferring these fish from one water body to the other. If you find a round goby, freeze a specimen and report it immediately to the Invading Species Hotline, website, or to OMNR. Be informed, contact the Invading Species Hotline, or visit us online. <laughs>